presentation. If anyone has any questions, just feel free to uh, post stuff in the chat, or if you need me to explain something or go a little bit slower, just let me know. Okay. So HTML um, is going to be our first kind of language for this workshop. Um, HTML is not usually considered a language, it's actually kind of like a description in order to write script for web development. Um, but you'll see later when we work through it, what that means. Okay, every web page you have visited was built with HTML, and it is one of the major technologies used on the web, both front end and back end, as one of the oldest existing technologies. Um, HTML stands for Hypertext Markup Language, and it is the language your web browser uses to describe the content and structure of web pages. So on the right, we have an example of what a web page looks like. And um, HTML is used to write every part of this web page, every content, picture, and text included in it. So if you take a look, look at the picture on the right, try to guess like which parts are written using HTML. And once I click next, you'll be able to see it boxed in red. So if anyone has an answer for this, definitely go ahead. Feel free to just drop answers in the chat or even unmute yourself, yourselves if you're comfortable with that. Okay, Paula said all of them except images. Okay, that's a good answer. So let me click next and show you guys. Everything in this web page is using HTML. Um, the text is using HTML and the images themselves, they're actually linked using HTML. So you have the images taken from somewhere else. And then in order to embed them inside the web page, you still have to use HTML. So all of the red boxes, basically every part of this web page is built using HTML. Um, now we're going to learn a little bit about how to write HTML. So first we're going to start off with some basic HTML tags. Um, tags are basically how you tell your web browser what to read and what part this content is, it is part of, basically. So, for example, we have the head, the body, headings, and paragraphs. And what they do is tell you how big you want the words to be, what, um, what kind of content it is. So, in order to use these, you need to learn the syntax for HTML and syntax for in, um, encoding is basically how you write it or the structure of the code. Um, we're going to come back to the slide in a second actually, but for now the syntax. So HTML is made up of two things in the syntax. One is the text and then the tags that mark up the text. So how you write it is basically wrap the text that you want to display on your web page in corresponding tags. And then we have an example on the right with paragraph tags. So um, the tags are written with a less than sign, the ty type of tag you want, which is um, which, which is one of these, the head, body, heading, or paragraph. So in this one, we chose paragraph. And then we write the text that we want to display inside of that. And then um, you need an opening tag and a closing tag. So the first part, the P inside the less than and greater than sign is the opening header, and then the end you need a less than sign and then you need a slash and then the type of heading or the type of tag and then a greater than sign. So it's really simple syntax, it's easy to memorize. You just need to remember the difference between the two and to add them and include text in the middle. Um, so the entire code block to the right, the tags and the text inside, all of that together make up what you call an HTML element. And just further explanation of what this image is showing, we have, okay, so we have um, the P and the inside the less than and greater than sign, which is the opening tag to tell the browser that everything that's about to follow is part of a paragraph. And then the closing tag, uh, which you see right here, tells the browser that this paragraph is complete. When the user visits our site, the browser loads up the HTML and parses it into the elements that will eventually make up our user interface. 
The P stands for paragraph in this case, and we can't make up tax because HTML is a language that provides a wide variety of tax that we must utilize. And that's what the previous slide shows. So all of these are tags that HTML includes and that you, um, you can either search up or memorize and use. You can't make up your own. The, the, these are just a small fraction of all the tags, very basic ones. Um, hardly anyone ever memorized this, all of the HTML tags because there are so many, but these are some basic ones that you should know off the top of your head. Uh, you use them all in the same way. So you just change the type of tag inside the brackets, basically. Okay. And then, let's see. Yep. Does anyone have any questions so far? Yeah, there was a question in the chat um, that was just direct, because these people are direct messaging me, um, so you can't <laughs> see it, but um, it says, I was wondering how would you compare websites like Shopify and Wix versus learning HTML? Is it possible to use HTML for special buns, like let's say a random word generator? Okay, so, uh, the difference between like using HTML and CSS as compared to something like Wix or uh, Squarespace is that by using HTML and CSS, you're kind of coding your website from scratch and you have entire like freedom to decide what you want to do with your website, what you want it to contain, uh, how you want to place things. Basically, you're just creating it with code from scratch and uh, building your website without any templates. Squarespace and Wix are kind of template sites where you drag and drop, where they already provide functions for you to include images or uh, text or other buttons, for example. In HTML and CSS, you kind of have to develop those buttons and code them from scratch, if that makes sense. Um, and there was we, another, oh, if yeah, you go can. ahead. Okay, there was another great question in the chat. Are there any platforms where we can build websites from HTML. Yes, I will be showing you guys how to do that in a second when we practice. Um, usually people use a text editor or IDE, but for us today, we're going to use an online IDE actually, so you guys don't have to download any software. Um, and the one we'll be using is called Replit, which we will look at in a second after we get through these slides. Okay. Uh, Images and attributes. So this is basically telling us how to embed pictures and images into your web page using HTML. Um, I wasn't sure if we would have enough time to go over this today, but I can show you guys this slide real quick, and then we'll see if we'll have enough time to practice. But um, you can feel free to share these slides with everyone too, so you guys can look back at the syntax and how to write it for reference. Uh, so most tags, like I said before, have an opening and closing tag, but a few do not, and one of those is an image. So right down um, on the left bottom, or bottom left, yeah, we see the syntax for images and attributes. Basically what you do is you have a less than sign, and then you write IMG, which uh, is the function in this HTML syntax, and that's the name of, the, of what you're trying to include. And then you have an attribute. So you write SRC and then you equals inside in quotation marks, we put the value, which is what you want your image to be. And what you do here is basically link um, an image and paste it in here. And then you have the closing, which is just a greater than sign. So our browser, this way our browser can present an image um, and then knows which image we want to present. And that's what the SRC attribute comes in. It tells our browser what the source of our image is, and we give it the link, which is the address, to the image we want to render. We can also add the out attribute, which contains text that identifies the image to a screen reader. The out text is displayed if the picture can't be displayed for some reason. It helps all users, not just those using screen readers. Um, that isn't included in the syntax right here, but just know that's another option you can include for images and attributes. Okay, and that's CSS now. So before we move on to CSS, we can just do... So, sorry, did what just happened? 
Um, I think she just logged out for some reason. Okay. Yeah, she's coming back in. So don't worry. Um, although like right now, maybe you can like do a split screen so that um, you guys can follow along while she, uh, while Sienna will. Um... Sorry about Are that. Are you back? I think I accidentally left the meeting. Um, okay, okay, so I was just telling everyone to like follow along with you through their browser. So you can just like split split, split screen this Zoom meeting and then easily follow along with it, you know. Yeah, that's perfect. Thank you. Uh, can you enable screen share real quick again, please? Okay. Um, I think I have to make you okay. And <laughs> thank you. Okay. Yeah, so feel free to follow along by split, splitting your screen. And first, what we'll do is go to this site called replit, R E P L dot I T. And then, um, wait, I'm going to log out real quick so I can show you guys how to enter if you don't, if you don't have an account. Give me one second. Okay, so if you go to replit.com, R E P L I T dot com, um, you should see this. I'll put that in a chat for everyone too. And then um, if you have an account already, feel free to just log in and wait for everyone for a second. But if you don't have an account, um, just sign up real quick. It should take like two minutes. So I'll give everyone like two or three minutes to do that. And then I'll and also, in. I just wanted to mention that um, I think now you can chat like if you, um, um, I let participants chat with anyone. So if you have any questions for Sienna while she's like going through her demonstration, please just like leave it in chat. I'm sure she will be happy to answer it for you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, feel free to do that. And if you're done with making your account, um, just say you are in a chat so I can know. Wherever or you can um, just do like in a reaction with a check mark or like a thumbs up or something like that. So, yeah. Okay, so I'll give everyone a second. Once you log in or create an account, uh, you should see some homepage like this. Um, I don't think you're sharing your screen anymore, is that? Um, I, I just wanted to look if everyone had reactions, so sorry. All right, I can just tell you. I think okay. just because of time, um, we should continue. I think okay. a, a bunch of people already did it, but like their kind of icons disappeared. So I okay. think we're good to go. Perfect. And this meeting is recorded, right? So everyone can look back. Yes, um, definitely. So now that you're in your homepage, what you do is click create a new REPL. Um, which should be this button over here. And then you'll see this. So you're going to have to pick HTML, CSS, and JavaScript, um, which is a combination of languages you need to create a web page. So what you can do is type in HTML, CSS, HTML, comma, CSS, comma, JS, um, if you don't have it in your favorites already. And then just create a random name. So we'll just say shop. And then, uh, once you have all of those, the most important part is just to select HTML, CSS, JavaScript. You can make it public or private and then create the REPL. And give it a second to load files. Okay, let me just run it real quick. So this interface right here for a REPL is uh, basically the files you'll be, use, you'll be using to create your web page and let me just run through it real quick. On the side, you have the three types of files, which is HTML, this one, JavaScript is this one, and CSS is, is this one. We won't be going into JavaScript today because of time. Um, JavaScript is used to 
basically add function to your website, like for example, clicking around instead of uh, just showing you the content that can be displayed. Uh, we'll start with HTML. And then this right here is where you'll be typing your code. On the right side, this white space right here is going to be your web page. Um, you can get the entire web page by copying the link you have up here and then typing it in. Right now, it's just all blank because we haven't written anything to display yet. Um, and then once you finish writing your code, you'll click run and it'll display on the right side. So I'll show you guys that in a second. Um, Repo includes some basic HTML headers already in order to start you guys off. So these HTML tags, if you have a like a text editor without it, you'll have to type it yourself. But for Repo, you already have it included. Um, it's this very basic stuff that you need in order to start start your HTML page. So now what we'll do is if you guys see um, these two body headers, inside this body, you're going to be typing whatever content you want to display. So um, yeah, because we want to include our content inside the body of the page. So now, if you guys remember the syntax that we talked about in the slides, we had the less than sign, and then we'll use, we'll start, our, start off with paragraphs as an example first too. And then we can try some other headers. So you have the um, opening tag, which looks like that. And then inside, you're going to write your text. So um, you can write anything you want. I'll just write, my name is Sienna. And then you need a closing tag, which is going to be the less than sign slash P greater than sign. And then once you include the, all of that in inside of uh, this space, you can hit run and it displays your text on the right side inside of the web page. Um, so I hope everyone is following along. If you have any questions or if anything's not working, feel free to type it in the chat. Um, if anything like ever doesn't work, first thing to check is whether you have the syntax right, because all of these elements that you write are really important in order for your browser to be able to read it. Okay, once you're done with a paragraph, uh, we can try maybe writing a header. So HTML reads your script from top to bottom. And if you want something uh, on top of something else, you have to write it before. So for example, if we want a header, we're going to have the less than sign. And then um, if you don't have it memorized already, you can come here and look at the header tags. So we have H1, H2, H3, all the way up to H6, which are usually titles. Um, for the sake of this one, we'll just start off with H1. Okay. So instead of writing P in the middle, you're just going to write H1. And that's the same syntax you included in the lesson greater than sign. And then you can write any text you want to display. So I'll just write hello and then closing tag. So you'll have a slash H1 and then greater than sign. And you have to make sure that these two are consistent and then your text must be included within these two. So now we can run it. And then you can see that both of these are displayed on the right side on your web page, and that the hello is much bigger than the my name is Sienna because the hello is a header and the uh, my name is Sienna is a paragraph. So that's how you change like text size and what each um, each piece of content on your web page is on the web page. Okay, um, so that's ba basic HTML for displaying text on your web page. Um, and you, get, you guys can feel free to play around with, with different headers if you want. So we practice two basic ones. The syntax is always the same. So it should be easy once you get that. Uh, the later always required. Yes, the closing tag always requires the diagonal line because that's how your browser tells the difference between an opening tag and a closing tag. So always just remember this syntax. This tells that the paragraph is starting. This tells that the paragraph is ending. Okay. Yep, you're welcome. Um, and then, so that's HTML. Next, we'll just go into CSS. 
and tell you guys how to change the like the look of the web page. Okay. So I present and then this is CSS. So CSS is basically how you create aesthetics on your web page. Um, what we saw before was kind of like how on the left side we have this Facebook page that's just all text. Uh, there's really nothing that makes it look good per se. Um, it's just very simple, very, very basic. Does the input tag require a closing syntax? Um, what do you mean by input tag? So see, what CSS does is be able to create a fully functional, uh, good looking web page because that's important um, from basic HTML. It transforms this into this. And CSS stands for Cascading Style Sheets and it's language that allows us to add styles to HTML documents on the web. And with the exact same HTML document, you can actually make very different looking pages using CSS. Um, so it's kind of up to the designer or the web developer to build and decorate the site. This Facebook page on the left, which is just ba basic HTML, you can use CSS to create very different versions. And this is what um, one version can be like. Okay, uh, for example, making a text box. Um, I'm not exactly sure what you mean, but if you're talking about like just displaying text on a web page, you'll always just need an opening header, writing the text in the middle, and then a closing syntax. So um, if we're talking about like an, like an actual box with borders, that's actually written using CSS. So like kind of like the decorations and everything for basic text, it's always the same. You just need the header and then it'll just display whatever you have on your web page. Yeah, hopefully that makes sense. Okay. And then now we'll learn some CSS syntax. So again, we have an example. And in this example, the browser will set the color of any hex element inside the body element. And we can define multiple sets of properties and values in a given rule. So CSS has lots of properties. And on the bottom right, we have a very small section of examples of properties. There are so many properties and there's no way you can memorize all of them. All of them are super, super specific. So for example, we have like background, background color, background image. We have the border bottom left radius, the width, all of these really specific parts of the website that you can customize. So uh, we'll start off with some very basic ones in CSS. And one example of that is color. And this property can, as its name suggests, help us change the color of some text. So CSS syntax works like this. You have the selector. So in this case, it's the body. And the selector basically tells us which part of the website you want to customize. So in this case, it's the body. And then uh, you'll need curly brackets opening, and then inside you'll give the color. So, or so, sorry, the property, which in this case is color. And then after you define the property, put colons, and then you'll give it a value. And this whole entire thing in the middle makes up its declaration. And then to finish that off, you'll use a ending closing uh, curly bracket. So this might feel a little bit complex at first because there's many parts, but the entire like premise is actually super simple. Once we start practicing, um, it's basically three parts. You select a part, you define what you want to customize, and then you give it a value. Um, and then we'll go around with a couple of them so you guys can play and see. Um, so besides color, there are also some other ways to style text. For example, font family, font size, font weight, in addition to color. And this entire code snippet is referred to as a CSS rule. So in this one, this example, this selector is P. In the previous one, we had body. This P stands for the paragraph. So um, I'll show you guys how to like select very specific parts of the web page in a second. But in this one, the selector is P and that's the element which we'll be changing with this rule. And then each, each line inside the curly braces is a declaration, which is font family, font size, font 
weight and color. These are the um, elements. And then they're, they're being assigned values in this rule. So the values for each of these properties respectively are uh, this font, and then you have the font size, which is 16px, font weight is 500, and then the color is just 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, which I think is either black or white, I forgot. But um, you can either use hexadecimal or you can use like the RGB value, or you can like just type in a color that your browser can read, um, which, which, which will make, make sense in a second. So um, another thing to remember is that the colons out um, next to the properties, as well as the semicolons are necessary in order for your browser to read and process it. So these are very important parts of the syntax. Um, if your code doesn't run, it's very likely that you forgot maybe a semicolon. So just make sure you have all of these parts before running and then checking again if it doesn't work. Uh, next. Okay, so now we'll practice some basic CSS. Ooh, wait, uh, am I still sharing my screen? I am, right? Okay. So you'll go back to your replit and it should be the same one. You don't need to create a new one because we already have some HTML. And then what we'll do now is go to the CSS file. So click that. Um, yeah. Okay. And um, it, your CSS file should be blank right now. And that's why your web page is so simple. So we'll start off by customizing it with some color. Um, our first example we have was using the body. So the body is this entire part. So CSS and HTML, they work together. You kind of use the HTML parts and refer which of those HTML parts you want the CSS to customize. So remember in um, our HTML text, we had the body, which is this, and it contained all of this. So what we're doing now is customizing all of this by referring to body. And then once you type body, you can have your curly brackets. And then inside the curly brackets, first part, give your property. So our property is color, and then colon. And then you see here how REPL gives you a bunch of selections for color. You can either click one of these or you can give a hexadecimal. So in this case, I'll just do a random one. We can do 098. And uh, for RGB, it goes from 000 to 255, I believe. So uh, 098 is kind of like an aquamarine color. And then remember the semicolon at the end. So once you have this, you have your CSS rule for the body. And then we'll run it. And you can see that it changed the text color to this uh, bluish color instead of being plain black. Okay, uh, you guys can feel free to try it on your own replit and make it any color you want. Feel free to ask any questions if you have any. Is it necessary to have three lines instead of one? Is it better one coding? Okay, it's not necessary to have three lines like how I did here. You can totally just write it like this, except um, it's not good coding practice because what we'll have to do later is like include different properties like how we did before we had the font family and everything else. It just looks better this way, it looks cleaner. If you were to write it like all close together, it'd be kind of hard to read both for yourself or actually just kind of for yourself, the computer doesn't really care. So yeah, that's a good question. You can write it like this, but for good coding conventions, is people usually write it like this instead. Okay, so once everyone has tried changing, yes, you can change the size of the text as well, which we will go in in one second. Uh, we just finished color. So now we'll do font family. So, um, right now we're still customizing just the body and we're just trying different things. So um, do everything together right here. Font family, let's see, we can, uh, once you type font family and then you do the colons, you'll have a bunch of selections that Replit just gives you. So for example, we could have, you could choose this one or you can just type it in yourself if you know your fonts. And don't, don't forget the semicolon. So again, remember like font family color, they're all different properties that CSS includes. You can decide to customize any of these 
and uh, you can go online to check like which properties you can customize. In this case, we'll just do font family, we'll also do font size. So and we can do that. Just type font size, colon, and then you can decide how like how big or small you want it to be. So let's do like 10 px right here. And then semicolon, and then oops. And lastly, let's try, actually, let's just look at what these two uh, make right now. So after you finish typing everything and you have everything included, click run. Okay, so do you guys see how the font changed? And then it also became smaller because we changed it to 10px. Uh, if you want to try a different font size, let's try 30. You can see that it becomes a lot bigger. Um, yeah, so that's how you customize those three. For any other properties you want to change, um, it's the same syntax. You just type what you want, colon, and then the value. So um, yeah, once you get this down, it's kind of easy to customize anything that are along the lines of these. Okay. And then now that we tried customizing the body, what I want to show you guys more in depth is how to connect CSS with HTML. Um, so in this case, we just changed the body, which is everything. But if, say you want to make the heading and the paragraph different colors, which is often in web design. What you do instead is um, instead of typing body, you'll talk about which part you want. So if we look back on our HTML text, we can see that if we want to change the color of hello only to something else, we would have to see what hello is part of, which in this case is header one. So what you do is instead of typing, actually, let's just write it again from scratch. Um, what you do is type H1 and then your curly brackets. So the only difference is that you're uh, defining in different parts that you want to change. And now let's do color, we'll do, um, let's do blue violet. My comment. Oops. Then uh, we can change the font font family. Or actually, let's not change the font family for this one. Let's just change the font size. Let's do one tpx. Semi colon. So, um, what you see here is that you can change certain properties for certain parts of the web page without having to affect everything. So, say you want to change the um the font family or the, like the, the font type for the hello and the my name is, um, but you want them to be different or you only want to change one, what you do is define them separately instead of defining them as a whole inside of the body. So we have the header right here right now. And then next we can just do the paragraph. So we have the P and remember that uh, the P contains the my name is part. So then type that, type the curly brackets, and then inside we can do a different color. So let's do, uh, let's continue doing the 098 color that we did before. Semicolon, so I keep coming out. Okay, font size, mm, we can do, we can make it smaller. So we can do maybe like 10 px. And then, and then we can change the font family for this one too. You guys can feel free to change, like play around and see if you want to change something else. You don't have to do the same colors or the same fonts as me. Um, or you guys can even have the header change a font family, but not the paragraph. So let's see, I want to do, we can do, we'll do this one again, I like this one. And then let me check the chat real quick. Um, yeah. So the difference between using body and P is that you're talking about different parts of the web page. Body is both the hello and the my name is included together while using the smaller ones inside um, makes it more specific to that part of the web page. So if you're using body, it changes the whole entire thing that we wrote. But if you're just changing like header one or the paragraph, it changes only that part inside of that piece. So if we run this code, we'll see that they're different now. Um, hello is purple because that's part of the header and that's what you specify the color to be. And then you have my name is Sienna in the in this hex color, which is part of the paragraph. 
So that's how you see how you can um, like change different parts of the web page. Does that make sense so far to everyone? Yeah, I think it's fine. There are no questions, so okay. we can keep going. Yeah, so uh, just feel free to play around, um, define different colors, font sizes, font family. And if you want, you can, oh, this is HTML. So you can look at some other properties. So this is only a very small section. You can just go online and search up. Um, just um, not to interrupt or anything. Um, I just got a question from Salma and she asked how to center the text. How to center the text? Okay. Uh, centering the text is a little bit more of advanced CSS, uh, which we won't go into today for time's sake. But basically, there are, besides changing like the text styles, you also have uh, like different, different properties that don't affect the text in CSS. So for example, if you look here, you can see like um, um, border bottom right radius or like bottom, bottom left width. Um, and that basically like kind of defines how, um, how thick or thin you want the, you want the, like that part of the web page to be. So um, for this, I would just search online and uh, maybe search up how to use the border left style property of CSS. Um, yeah, that's a good question, but we unfortunately won't be able to get into that today. Uh, just know that that's another CSS property you can use. Uh, if you want to look at all the CSS properties, there are we can just look at other random one. So look how many there are. There are so many that you can customize. And this is only a small fraction. Of, I think this one's more comprehensive. Yeah, I just wanted to hop in here and say that um, if like Sienna, if you have any like resources that you wanna like share to our audience, um, right. obviously just send it to our entrepreneur part email and I will put it in the attendee guide which I okay. sent to all the emails. So okay. hopefully you guys already saw the attendee guide. So yeah, just saying that and you can keep going. Okay. Uh, so, yeah, those are really good questions. Um, there are so many things you can do with CSS and um, HTML, both of them. We are only able to scratch a little bit of the surface today, but if you want to like maybe customize it further, search up how to use all of these properties. So like if you click this one, I think it tells you how to use it. Yeah, W3 Schools is a really good site for learning how to code. All right. Um, so I just feel free to play around with that. And then that's all we'll go over for CSS today. Now, lastly, for this workshop, we have a small design section. So let me just finish my slides for those. <laughs> so um, designing a web page relates to the user interface, which is basically what the user sees when they go to that web page. Uh, the U UI UX is a common term used in the web development. UX refers to the user experience or what they, uh, like the functions and how that makes the user feel when they access the web page. So um, design more so relates to the user interface, which is what they see. Okay, so some learning goals will take away from the design and the workshop. Um, sorry, is there any like background noise? Who's making the noise? Um, do you know where the background noise is coming from or? I don't know where the background noise is coming from, but I hear it too. It's not coming from you, right? Cause every, no. okay. okay, okay, got it. <laughs> okay, go ahead, keep going. Okay, 
Uh, so we'll identify design principles and applications. We'll identify color choice and applications and create palettes with appropriate contrast and also create wireframes taking design principles into consideration. So we're kind of moving away from the most technical aspects of web development right now, which is which was like kind of the HTML, CSS, JavaScript coding part, and now looking more at design choices and um, a bigger overview. Um, so one thing is humans are hardwired to see patterns and apply structures to quickly understand their surroundings. And then the seventh salt principles are derived from a psychology that describes how we perceive the world around us as complete units and patterns versus a series of unrelated parts. So in this workshop, we'll look at three of them that we can use to uh, think about while we design our website and how we want it to look. Does it start off with wire premium? Okay, let me go back to these slides. I kind of put them out of order. But one of the laws is the law of proximity, which means that the elements next to each other tend to be grouped together. Even though this is made up of unrelated elements, we see a column on the left, a square to the upper right, and a short row on the lower left. So one thing you can think about when designing your web page is what you want to group together, what you want to keep in close proximity, and what you want to uh, maybe move further away to appeal to the aesthetic of the web page. Uh, and yeah, this relates more to like the question of how um, how to like center text, how to center images, or how to move them around, which uses like the width, the uh, um, different properties of CSS. And then next is the law of enclosure. So items that are enclosed in a border or with a background color tend to be grouped together a figure will be perceived as separate from its background and a border provides a separation. So one thing you can do with CSS is add like outlines, add different um, pieces of color or elements to the web page that you wouldn't be able to do with just basic HTML. Um, so like, for example, if these boxes were text, the CSS will be able to arrange these um, arrange these words or text and then be able to enclose them in boxes or different colors or maybe even fill the background of that specific portion with a certain color and you'd be able to customize parts of it so um, if this was one header and this part was another header you would define them separately with css um, i don't want to go too much connecting this to css or html right now because we haven't gotten that deep into CSS. This is more just like a general overview of things you can think about while designing web pages or anything otherwise. Okay, and then the last law we'll look at is the law of similarity, which says that elements that look similar will be perceived as part of the same form. Despite the similar scale and distribution of shapes, we see columns of squares and circles. So um, in this example, they put a, a row or a column of boxes and the column of circles and a pattern um, to appeal to the aesthetic based on your own, um, what you want to design for your own. You can, you can definitely change it around. For example, you could put like a diagonal of squares and then a diagonal of circles. So um, these are just things to think about that you can research maybe to see if it appeals to your audience or if it's fit for the purpose of your web page. And then, okay. And then one more thing uh, to look at is color and emotion, which is super important. So because or whether or not we consciously realize that colors carry meaning and the exact meaning can be subjective, but can be swayed by other design choices and context. Therefore, it is important to be aware that colors can have very different connotations and associations based on different cultural traditions, countries, and religious beliefs. We did learn how to customize color in text today with CSS, um, but other things you can do is like change the color of the background. You can change the color of a certain box or just a certain part of the web page. Um, and then some more about color. There are three groupings that colors fall into, which are warm, cool, and neutral. The colors inside of these groups tend to share similar meanings. Warm colors are generally positive and energetic. Cool colors are calmer and relaxing. And neutral colors are more conservative. So on the right, you have a color emotion guide, which is used in a lot of web development programs. And you can see like how or what logos have been using these colors. So um, they, and then like the connotation that is related to these colors and what kind of 
I guess, um, vibe they give off. Okay. Well, I think I have a question. Do we have to pay to launch our website? We called it no. With Replit, you do not have to pay in order to see the website. Um, let me see. Um, let me see if this works actually. If you copy this link right here, is it like I wouldn't say this is an official website yet because like building a website contains a lot more like hosting and you'll need to choose your domain, all that stuff, which is unrelated to like the building of it using code. Um, but with Replit, what you can do if you want this prototype is just copy this link right here and then paste it in a new browser or share. I think you can also invite people to edit it with this, with Replit. But um, what you see here is what we already coded. Okay. And then the last thing regarding design for this workshop is wireframes. So wireframing is a very important part of, um, of web development. Uh, yes, anyone with the link can access, I believe. Uh, I think you can also set the set the replit to public or private. So go into the settings and explore around with that. And then, so basically what wireframing is, is creating a template or a guide before you even start coding. The best apps and websites require an incredible amount of planning and thought and designers spend hours and hours building out a user experience, color palettes, and more. So a great idea can be built into that, but with poor design, it might go nowhere. And that's why it's so important to consider these aspects. Um, one part of that planning process is, make, is making wireframes. The wireframe is a visual guide of the content and functionality on a page, taking into account the user experience. It should be treated as a roadmap, is completely planned before starting a trip. It is referenced throughout the trip and at the end, the final destination should look a lot like where the map was supposed to take you. So on the right side, we have a um, we have an example of a wireframe that somebody created. You can either like draw on ha by hand on a piece of paper. You can have like your logo on the top left corner. You can decide where you want to place these things before you go straight in and start coding. Because if we go straight in and start coding, we don't really know like, oh, which parts of the CSS we forgot or um, what things we want to include inside of the HTML. So planning it all out before is, like, is a good idea. Um, and then some things you have to consider when you create a wireframe is, for example, what HTML elements will be used for each piece of the page, what class names we use for those elements, what design principles are being utilized so the page is clear and understandable, and then make a decision about the color palette you will use and write those colors, for example, hex codes, RGBA, or others down so you don't forget. And then also finally get user feedback. Ask someone who wasn't involved in the design process for their opinion and how you can better improve your product. Um, on the left side, you have two other examples of wireframes. Um, another thing you can use to create wireframes is Canva or Google Drawings or any other like uh, graphic design software that you can create a template with. Uh, wireframes aren't going to be the actual website because they don't pro provide any functionality. They're kind of just the overview of your plan. Um, and then you'll basically turn that prototype into your reality by using HTML, CSS, and JavaScript to code it. And I think that is all for my presentation. We have a couple minutes left. So um, we can probably play around with, with our replet more. I can try to see if I can show you guys how to change like the background color or something. And then if you guys have any other questions as you play around, just feel free to ask. Does that sound good? Or yeah, that sounds really great. Um, I feel like this workshop has been super helpful, especially for beginners. Mm -hmm. um, it's really taught like everything that you need to know just to get started in HTML and CSS. And definitely when you get started, it's really easy to like go online and explore like all the websites that you can um, use, all the resources. There are so many resources online to just explore for um, creating an amazing website that you love. Um, so. Yeah, this is definitely a very um, beginner workshop. It taught you very basic HTML and CSS on how to build your um, a very simple, basic 
web page that can display content. Um, and then if you're interested, just feel free to keep exploring and see what else you can change. So um, let me let me create a new body section. Okay. Um, we can do we can learn how to change the background color because that's really simple. So the property is just called background color. So just type it like how you did the other properties, give your colon and then pick a color. So uh, let's see, it's a good color for a background. We can do antique white or something. And then don't forget your semicolon and then we'll run it and see if that works. Okay, so um, that's another thing we learn. We can learn how to change the background color of this web page. Uh, it's very basic, it's very simple. And we put that on the body section because we want the whole entire background to be this color. If you want to just box it or um, or like do a very, very small portion of the website that involves a lot more um, like very, very detailed coding. Uh, what did you learn, used to learn more or practice HTML? Um, honestly, HTML doesn't involve like a lot of logic or practice per se, because yeah. um, it's very straightforward and simple. You kind of just like type stuff that you want to display. So what, what you can do to get better at HTML is just definitely first start off by memorizing these very simple tags, like headers and paragraphs, know the difference between them and when you want to use them. And then just go online, search up different tags you can use. Uh, learn about what you can do with HTML and um, what parts you can create with it. So that way you can create more complex and engaging, engaging websites. Um, and then just like use Repl or some other text editor to, to just play around with it, type it and see what results it gives you. Yeah, I think that's great. Um, for me, like I know I learned HTML through using um, a co Code Academy, if anyone knows what that is. Um, I think you could get a free trial if you like um, sign up like as a new guest. So I don't know if that's something Sienna you used or like mm -hmm. you use something else, but that's definitely what taught me kind of like the basics of HTML. Yeah, there are so many um, resources to learn basic coding like this. You can you can just go online, search up guides. You can go on YouTube and watch videos. I actually got my first introduction to web development through this uh, camp called Code with Classy, which is a free Coney summer camp for girls. So feel free to apply to that if you're interested. Uh, I'll type the name into the chat. Yeah, actually, I just did that this year, which is mm -hmm. um, pretty cool. It was yeah, really definitely, fun. it was definitely really fun. Too. Yeah. Um, so, um, again, just want to make some, if you're done with your workshop, then just thank you, like, your workshop was, like, I bet it helps so many of these um, people um, know how to, like, know how to, like, kind of, like, navigate, like, HTML and CSS now, and design as well. Um, I just want to announce that um, our first keynote is going to be um, starting at 4.30. So the link is already posted in the Slack. So um, you can 